There was no knock. There was no knockdown. Um, I always, I'm the one getting punched, by the way, so I didn't feel the punch, and it was definitely just me twisting my my ankle. It was uh, it was Jacob pushing me down as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh, the referee kept uh, warning Jacob also that he was pushing me down with his elbow. I normally go down low like that, so you know it's not the first time uh-huh. it happens. So it's a, it's a mix of a lot of things, but it wasn't a clean punch to knock me down. It was all my ankle and. If it was a punch, then why didn't I stay down? I was up at the count of two or three on one foot, so definitely wasn't no punch. And I believe the WBA middleweight champion, Daniel Jacobs, online. Daniel, you want, you want opening statements and maybe response to that? Uh, well, I came in briefly, and uh, from what I hear, he's saying that that last shot wasn't a, a punch that put him down. Uh, I don't know what my eyes were seeing, or I don't know what my fist felt, but in, in my opinion, and I think if you clearly go to the to the video and the replay, it was a punch that put him down. It was the uppercut that started, which had him back, uh, withdraw and, and back up, and then it was the overhand right that put him down. So, um, the overhand right grazed the back about, of my but, head. Yeah, the over the overhand right grazed the back of my head, but my ankle was already twisted. It was it was a tricky a gra- shot. It, it could be a graze. It could be whatever you want to say it could be, but it put you down. Listen, let me let me give my opening statement, please. I just got on the line. But it didn't keep, that. but it didn't keep me down. If I was hurt, I would have got, I wouldn't have gotten. Up. Okay, allow me to have my opening down, statement, Sergio. Please, I just got on the line, brother. Show some respect. I just got on the line. So my opening statement, ladies and gentlemen, it is the honor to be back into the ring. Uh, I've been out for quite some time. Um, the reason we've actually been out for so long was because we were trying to get a better opportunity at fighting B.J. Saunders. Obviously, that fight took a little longer than anticipated, and this is the reason why this fight is happening. It isn't because I've been avoiding Sergio Mora. Uh, I just understand that this this fight for my career at this particular point isn't really going to do anything for me. It's more going to do anything uh, more for Sergio than it would do for me. Um, but me and him have the same management in Al Heyman, so I can understand why this fight is being made. Um, but the reasons why he's saying this fight is being made as far as me ducking him and not wanting to fight him, I mean, that's absurd. That's absurd. Um, but I'm just excited, nevertheless, to be back into the ring. Um, it's a good time for me to be able to get back in there and have some fun again. Um, I look forward to, uh, you know, a, a very good matchup again, I hope. Um, but one question that I do have for Sergio is in previous uh, interviews, you know, he said that he was going to have a more exciting style and, you know, he was tired of being the boring fighter he used to be that wasn't appealing to fans and he wasn't going to do much running and all this other stuff, you know, stuff that he's been getting criticized before. He wasn't going to do that. And now that he says he felt the power of myself, he says you're going to completely switch the game plan. Um, so my question is, you know, what? Why the sudden change? I mean, what's 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 the difference now? Why are you not going to be more exciting and more appealing now, um, like you said before? I said I was going to be exciting and more aggressive. I didn't say I was going to be stupid. Oh yeah, that is stupid to come and that will be stupid to come and actually go toe-to-toe and bang with me. You're absolutely right. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see too. the game plan that you have for this coming fight because I just hope it's not a stinker, man. You're getting a second opportunity at a world uh, at, at my world title shot. Um, please, let's not make it a snoozer. Is that enough uh, with both receiving a lot of criticism for this fight? But, dude, please, let's just make it exciting. Hey, listen, I'm the king of criticism. If you can't take criticism, you don't belong to be a champion. You don't, you don't belong in, in the top like that. That's part of being a world champion, taking all the bullshit from critics and media and everyone else. And if you're thin-skinned, then you're not going to hang very much as a world champion. Okay, uh, Daniel, I think we're – thank you, everyone, yeah, you for being on the call. Person, you, forgot, you forgot one more person, brother. You forgot one more person, Sergio. I want to thank what, Danny Jacobs? That's it. That's my man. That's my <laughs> man. Go That's fuck my man. I'll see you in two weeks, homeboy. <laughs> well, let's do it on September 9th. You already know, Sergio. I'm coming for you, brother. I'm coming for you.